Hello everyone, we're back with the Falcons franchise. In today's episode, we're going to be getting all the way through the offseason after having won the Super Bowl. We'll start the offseason by hiring a new offensive coordinator because our old OC, Chris Roberts, he ended up leaving and taking a head coaching position with the Chicago Bears. Our new offensive coordinator is going to be Jerry Patterson. He has been brought over from the Philadelphia Eagles. We'll see how he does in his new role with us. We did end up having a couple of retirements after winning the Super Bowl in Micah Hyde and Julio Jones, so those two are both able to go out on top. We are now in the re-signing period and actually are not going to re-sign any of these players and it includes some pretty good players. Grover Stewart, who had an impact for us last year, Andre Mintz, who's had an impact for us the last couple of years, and others, but yeah, I just don't think it's worth bringing them back at their current price points, so we'll let them hit free agency, maybe they end up coming back if there's nothing better available in free agency, and maybe not, but for now let's move on and start to make some trades. The first trade that we're going to be making is involving the veteran Jake Matthews, who's been a Falcon for his entire career, but it is just time to move on from him. So we're going to be sending him away to the Jacksonville Jaguars, and in return, we're going to get back a second round pick in this year's draft, but we're also going to give them a fifth round pick in this year's draft. In our next deal, we're going to be trading away Yannick Ngakwe, who is supposed to be a dynamic duo with Arnold Abiketti off the edge. It just hasn't worked out, so we're going to be dealing him to the Los Angeles Rams, and in this trade, we're going to get back a third round pick in this year's draft and a fourth round pick in next year's draft. In our third trade, we're going to be trading quarterback Daniel Barton, who is a star to have in his second year, so we don't necessarily have to trade him, but we already have our starter in Michael Mann, so it makes sense to get a lot for him while we still can, and we'll trade him to these Steelers who do not have a quarterback on their roster, and in return, we get back a couple of second round picks, one in this year's draft, one in next year's draft. Here's a look at the roster after all of the moves that we just made. You can see we have a huge need at backup quarterback and also have a huge need on defense for a starting edge rusher, but there are other needs on this team that we'll get to here in a bit. But let's go ahead and check out all the available free agents. You can see there are a lot of great free agents available. Buda Baker and Tyron Matthew are two safeties that I thought about going for in that preview episode and we are going to go for one of them and there is also an edge rusher available in Trey Hendrickson that we talked about in that preview episode but we are not going to be going after him instead it is time for us to make a trade for another player and that player is on the Los Angeles Chargers it is Joey Bosa the 30 year old has superstar dev is a 91 overall, has a lot of great ratings, and has been a pretty consistent player, maybe not an elite player the last couple of years. He is on the last year of his contract, so we are going to have to extend him after making this trade if we want to keep him around. And we are going to give up a first round pick, a second round pick in this year's draft, and a second round pick in next year's draft. But I feel like it's going to be worth it to try and get this defense to go to a whole nother level. It was good last year, but I feel like it could be even better with Joey Bosa. Here are the draft picks that we currently have after making all those moves. We will get to the draft eventually, but for now, let's get back to free agency and actually place some offers. Our first offer is going to go out to strong safety Buda Baker, who is a 94 overall at 29 years old, has a lot of great ratings, and has been a very consistent player throughout his entire career, so I think he is a perfect player to add to this defense to try and put us over the top just like Joey Bosa. We'll give him a four-year deal for $70 million. Our next offer is going to go out to quarterback Daniel Jones, who is a 28-year-old at a 68 overall. His ratings are not the greatest, at least not for a starter, but he'd be a backup for us, obviously, behind Michael Mann. So we'll give him a three-year offer for $7.5 million to come and be our backup quarterback. Let's see if we're able to get Buda Baker and Daniel Jones in the first round of free agency. And we end up getting neither of them. Buda Baker signs for less money with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and Daniel Jones has not signed yet. And to make matters worse, Tyron Matthew, he ended up re-signing with the Saints, which means we are kind of screwed at safety, because the next best available guy on the markets is Eddie Jackson. It's not like he's a bad player. The 31-year-old is an 81 overall, and his ratings are not terrible. However, he's not really an upgrade over what we have already on the roster. We will bring him in to try and have him compete for a starting spot. It's going to be just a one-year deal for $5 million, and he ends up signing. We also ended up getting Daniel Jones in the second round of free agency. 
In the third and final round of free agency, we brought in a bunch of guys on one-year contracts that are not that expensive to have them compete for a roster spot in the preseason. That includes Kenneth Gainwell at running back. He is brought over from the Eagles, so he's going to follow one of his old coaches in Jerry Patterson. Matt Pryor has been brought in to compete for a backup tackle spot. Leonard Floyd is going to replace Andre Mintz. We also added Dalvin Tomlinson to replace Grover Stewart. Dylan Moses is back on a one-year cheap contract. Maybe he makes the team, maybe he doesn't. And and the last contract we handed out was to Jalen Mills. He will be competing for a depth safety spot. We'll see if he ends up making the team. Let's go ahead and check out what some other teams decided to do in free agency. The Colts have signed Justin Fields to be their starting quarterback, and that means that Desmond Ritter is now going to be their backup quarterback. Trey Lance is going to be the starter for the Commanders. Davis Mills is going to be the starter for the Seahawks. At running back, Javante Williams is going to be joining the Patriots, and replacing Williams on the Broncos is going to be Travis Etienne. At receiver, DeAndre Hopkins has decided to sign with the Panthers, which means he is going to be in our division, and he joins a great offense offense that already has Jalen Hurts and Christian McCaffrey. Amon Rice St. Brown also joining the Patriots. DeForest Buckner is going to be a member of the Giants. Going to the Colts, or going back to the Colts, I should say, is Grover Stewart. Trey Hendrickson is going to be going back to his old team in the Saints. And Jeremiah owosu Cormo leaves the Browns to head to Philadelphia to be a member of the Eagles. Odefi Away is going to be a member of the Buccaneers. And at cornerback, Marcus Peters is going to be going to the Panthers, and that's going to mean... Uh, they're going to have some interesting practices with DeAndre Hopkins and Marcus Peters. The Buccaneers get a pair of young cornerbacks and Asante Samuel Jr. and J.C. Horn. And the Panthers also ended up getting free safety Quandre Diggs. Let's turn our attention towards the draft. We'll begin by checking out a couple of private workouts that we had. Tommy Barnes, he's got first or second round talent and looks like a pretty solid player across the board. He's not my number one player on the draft board, but he's a pretty solid looking player. Marcus Campbell, another solid looking player, just not my number one on the draft board. Damon Agnew, he is actually my number two player on the draft board. He has top five talent in the entire draft, and so does Stefan Burns. I would love to be able to get both of these guys. They are, however, projected to go in the first or second round, and we do not have a first round pick and only have one second round pick. So if we want to get both of them, we're going to have to make some trades in this year's draft to try and move our way around and try our best to acquire both of them. But let's just go ahead and get into the draft. The Chargers ended up taking Darren Rollins with the number one overall pick to try and help out Justin Herbert. The Panthers select left tackle Kendall Williams to help out Jalen Hurts. And the Saints, whoever they're going to have at quarterback, is getting a new left tackle in Cortland Ross. The Ravens take the first cornerback off the board at pick 17 in Desmond Burse. And another cornerback goes at pick 19 to the Texans in Justin Durant. Marcus Campbell does end up going in the first round to the Rams at pick 21. And the Buccaneers end up selecting a tackle of their own, which means that all three of the teams in our division besides us selected a tackle in the first round. And the Chiefs take a cornerback at pick 30. And the last pick in the first round is also going to be a cornerback. He goes to the Chargers. I decided it was finally time to go ahead and make a trade up. We're going to be making a trade with the Tennessee Titans to acquire the third pick in the second round. And we're going to give up a second round pick in next year's draft and a third round pick in this year's draft to move up and select quarterback Stefan Burns. He is 6'3", 196, 22 years old, out of Oregon State. He had a great combine and pro day and has a great skill set. He, of course, has got top five talent in the entire draft, so we're going to select him here. And he's got hidden dev with 94 speed, 91 change of direction, 94 acceleration. We'll check out the cover tradings, but it looks like a great pick, at least so far. Just a couple of picks later, we're going to be making another trade, this time with the Minnesota Vikings to move up to pick 39. We're going to give up pick 85, 113, and a future third round pick to move up into the second round again. And with this pick, we are, of course, going to be taking strong safety Damon Agnew, who is 5'9", 205, 22 years old, out of Louisville. He had an extremely great combine in pro day. You like this skill set? He has top five talent in the entire draft, so we take him, and he's only got normal dev. 91 speed is good. Hopefully the coverage ratings in the overall is good. I mean, he has top five talent in the entire draft, so the overall, it at least should be good. 
Advancing along again into the second round, we are now on the clock at pick 11. We don't have to make a trade for this pick, and with this pick, we're going to be taking outside linebacker Tommy Barnes, who is 6'3", 233, 21 years old, out of Iowa. He destroyed the combine in pro day. You love the skill set. He does need to work on his coverage a little bit, but we are going to go ahead and take him here with this pick, and he's got hidden dev, 84 speed. The change of direction is a bit low. The strength isn't too bad. I like the pick, and he should at least be decent depth on uh, our defense continuing to advance along into the third round the panthers ended up getting walter walter slate who we looked at before and we are now going to make another trade up this time with the bears to get pick 101 we'll give up pick 128 and 177 to move up and select a quarterback in greg james he is six foot 215 23 years old out of northern iowa he ended up winning the award for being the best player in all of fcs football last year he had not the best combine and pro day from a throwing standpoint but we're willing to take a chance on him right here and he's only got normal dev as well the throw power is pretty bad the speed's at least decent hopefully the accuracies are at least playable as a backup potentially or a third stringer Lionel Chapman ends up going a couple of picks later to the Broncos Peter Swinton goes to the Cowboys in the first or fourth round and we are now into the fifth round on the clock at pick seven and we are actually going to be selecting another linebacker this time in Travante Buchanan he is 6'1 225 22 years old out of Massachusetts chooses he's got good speed but not a whole lot else you like the awareness and you like the coverage and i thought why not take a guy who could at least be a good coverage guy and a good special teams player he's got 85 speed only normal dev hopefully the coverage ratings are at least decent we have another pick in the fifth round, but instead of making a selection here, let's trade back with the Texans to acquire their fifth round pick and seventh round pick in this year's draft. And instead of making a pick with the pick that we just got from the Texans, let's trade back again. This time with the Titans, we'll be sending them that fifth round pick for a sixth round pick in this year's draft and a seventh round pick in next year's draft. But we're not going to be making any more trades in this draft. Let's just stick and pick the rest of the way. With this pick in the sixth round, we're going to take a right tackle in J.D. Doris, who is 6'4", 314, 21 years old, out of Missouri. He had an awful combine and pro day, but I like the A awareness and the pass block ratings all look pretty good. So I'm willing to take a chance on him here in the sixth round. He's only got normal dev and 77 strength. Hopefully he's going to high overall like hopefully the rest of the draft the class that we have made picks on so far does. Now in the seventh round, we're going to be taking another tackle in Darren Reynolds. He is 6'5", 307, 22 years old out of Louisville. He had a great combine in pro day, especially for somebody projected to go undrafted. I like the awareness, impact blocking, and injury rating, so I'll take a chance on him in the seventh round. He's got 84 strength and normal dev. Maybe he's got a higher overall than JD, Dor JD Doris. I guess we'll find out in a bit. Now time to make the Mr. Irrelevant selection. It is going to be left guard Andrew Kelly, who is 6'5", 305, 22 years old out of Oklahoma. He had a pretty good three cone and 20 yard shuttle, but besides that, a pretty terrible combine and pro day. I like the awareness and impact block rating and we do take him. He's got normal dev and 87 strength, but it is time for us to check out the entire draft class and all the picks that we have made. Stefan Burns is a 76 overall. With that hidden dev, I like the man coverage and most of his ratings. He does need to work on the zone coverage, but I do think overall he looks like a pretty great player. Damon Agnew is a 76 overall as well, with just normal dev though, and the main coverage and block shedding are terrible. They need a lot of work, and to me, it looks like he is going to be more of a role player and not really a starting caliber safety, at least not for a while. Tommy Barnes, he looks pretty good. He's a 73 overall. With that hidden dev, I don't think he starts for us on day one. I think he's just going to be a backup, but that's fine. Greg James, he looks like a bust to me, a 61 overall. He's got no throw power. The accuracies are not very good. And at least he's got speed, but to me, he looks like a bust. Trevante Buchanan, a 64 overall. Only that normal dev. I actually like a lot of his ratings, and I think he could be a decent special teams player for us. Or worst case scenario, a good player to have on the practice squad. JD Doris, a 64 overall. And his run block rating is a 60. I think he needs a lot more work than I thought he would. He is more of a player that looks like he'll end up on the practice squad than he would end up making the team. So more than likely, he'll be on the practice squad. So would Darren Reynolds. I just don't think either of these guys are ready to be a backup tackle on a team that is trying to repeat as Super Bowl champions. Andrew Kelly also looking like a player that is going to end up on the practice squad. He does have good a good pass block rating, but the run block rating is just way too low to have him be on the active roster. 
Overall, I would say it was a disappointing draft by us. Not a bad draft, but just a bit disappointing in my opinion. The Saints had a great offseason, especially a great draft. They took a hidden dev tackle in the first round, a hidden dev middle linebacker in the second, a hidden dev tight end in the third, and a hidden dev cornerback in the fourth. And remember, they also signed Trey Hendrickson in free agency, so the Saints are going to be a better team than they were last year. And actually, I wanted to point out that all three of the other teams in our division, they all drafted a tackle in the first round right after we went out and traded for Joey Bosa. And then two of the three teams in the second round took a hidden dev middle linebacker to try and slow down AJ Dillon. So clearly they are trying to get better to beat us. And then the Buccaneers, they had a pretty bad draft in my opinion and a bad off season, well, at least at cornerback, they made a couple of moves and then they got a hidden dev tackle in the first round. So they had the worst off season but remember, they did win the division, so they are still on top in the division and so we proved that we can beat them. Uh, the Panthers, they had a pretty good draft and offseason getting DeAndre Hopkins and Marcus Peters and getting hit two hidden dev rookies. So the entire division, it got better. The Buccaneers, maybe only a little bit better, but I would say everybody in the division got better and it was already a pretty good division. Here is a look at the roster after the offseason. I think we are going to actually just not record the preseason games. I will play the preseason games, but we already know who's going to be starting pretty much at this point. So we're going to be jumping into week one in our next episode. And I guess we'll find out who we're going to be playing in our next episode. We're not going to be showing that here. Thanks for watching this one, and I will see you in the next one.